is single.php which is this one and just copy this and just paste it in the front page.php and then I'm going to start getting rid of the things that we don't need so we don't need the post wrap like all of this so I'm going to get rid of that uh, and then we do need this I'm going to take care of that we don't need the row and everything so I'm just going to get rid of the row I'll still probably keep the container okay and I'm just going to paste this PHP code which is like half post let's get rid of this post wrap also okay great so we're just looping through if half post the post and then getting the template parts content and just displaying that and I think we don't need this here yep great awesome let's take a look uh, I'm gonna go to so make sure that when you go to your dashboard and go to appearance and then go to customize and then home page settings and make sure that home is selected over here and post page blog is selected just letting you know okay and over here currently we don't have the content for the page we just have a normal content which we generally use for articles and stuff and probably we don't need that so we're just going to create a template called content page dot php okay oops just rename it content page.php and then just to save time I'm going to go ahead and copy the comments section this is be content page template and so I'm just going to paste the piece of code over here so we just have this article with the ID of the post the post class we're checking if it's not home page and show the title of the page because we don't want to show the heading on the page um, home page and um, also this is going to be the entry content and this is using the content and then if it's not home then show the uh, next and previous links pagination links and then you have the entry footer as well so let's take a look uh, since we have the content page and that's what we are asking for here we'll just this a comma and then the slug which is page so it will be content dash page which will render this template so let's take a look let's refresh there you go congratulations so you've got the cover block and you've got the heading as well of course it doesn't look that great because first of all uh, there's no spacing so let's take care of that so what I'm going to do is remove get rid of this container you can just say home page wrap for now okay, there you go now we need some spacing between these and I think we should also it's not even taking the color okay so to add that color we have to use the add themes we have to add support for these colors and also ensure that there is some space and gap between each of the content so for and also because we give the support for the uh, full width and small width sorry we add a support of wide width and full width we also need to add the support for that so let's take a look as to what's happening and how we can take care of that so let's take a look so we have the entry content and this one it says align full and this is align wide okay so we have to take care of that so for that we're going to add the support to the theme for the style so what we're going to do is first of all we'll start our webpack dev server so I'm just going to say npm run dev and I'm gonna come in over here uh, inside of my assets and source and then inside of SAS then I'm going to go to the support that I want to add only in the front end right so for the front end I can just create like Gutenberg dot SCSS
Okay, and then I can include that into my main dot CSS. Okay, so add import generic, and then I'm going to include the uh, Gutenberg. Okay, so now inside of the Gutenberg.scss, the first thing we want to do is on the home page. So probably we have something available called home over here. Uh, so we can either use that class or we can use home page wrap. So whichever is suitable, I could have used like body dot, uh, you know, home, home, or I could have just used the, my own custom class. It's up to you. Okay. Then inside of this, I want to target the entry content. Okay. And over here, I can say that go ahead and apply the. Um, so go ahead and target all the elements inside of the entry content, which are direct element, direct child, except which is not, not align, oops, not align full, and not align wide because I don't want to target these. Oops. not align wide right so target these all the element but not align full and align wide and I want to my site to have a particular uh, you know uh, width and everything so if you notice we already have one the container has it all I have to do is just apply those so I'm just going to come in over here and check that what is it so this is max width is 1140 so I'm going to come in over here inside of the variables and I can put so I can put site width to be 1140 pixels okay and then I can use this variable and then I can also use some of the paddings also so I can check what is the padding when the screen goes smaller so take a look so I can give like padding left to be like 15 pixels padding right to be like 15 pixels again this is not a CSS course but just letting you know that you know this is all things that you can do so I'm gonna go back to my gutenberg.scss and I'm just gonna ensure that I'm going to apply this, uh, you know, over here. So, how do we do that? I'll say max width, and that'll be site width. I have copied this only for reference. I'm going to delete that in a moment, so don't worry. And then padding left will be, in fact, padding will be top will be zero, left will be sorry right will be padding right and then bottom will be zero and then padding left okay brilliant and of course this is not going to be applied to these so now I have to do the align full and align wide so how do we take care of that so I have to target the align wide now so I'll put wide width and then let's say our wide width is going to be 1200 pixels shall we 1200 pixels or let's make it like 1240 for that matter okay that's going to be my wide width and also I'm going to come in over here and I'll say margin 0 auto And I think that we should have a top and bottom padding for each one of them. So I think it's better to define that in the variable as well. So padding left, padding right, padding top, and padding bottom. I think 40 pixels should be good for that. If we need more, we can always add that. This should be margin, not padding. Margin. Okay, so now I will come in over here and then 
I'll put margin top auto and margin bottom and then auto. So left and right will be auto and then top and bottom. Okay, let's see. Max width and the padding should be applied to only the elements which are not align full and align wide. So I think we need to target them separately. So first I'll take it like this. Okay, so margin definitely needs to be applied to all. So I'm going to put that there. And then the max width and everything should be to this. I think the padding left and padding right can still go for the align wide. Okay, and then I will say that if it's align full, like this one, then max width should be the wide width, right? Let's try that. Great, that works. I think 40 pixels is too little. I think we can have more. So variables, I think we can go with like 60 pixels. Yep, awesome, great. This should be actually full width. Why is it showing not showing full width? Let's take a look. So this is aligned full. It's showing max width to this. Let's take a look. Oh, oops. This would have been align wide and not align full. Align wide. Okay, let's refresh. Awesome, great, so this works. And what you can also do is you can add the padding, you can do all of that stuff, probably I'll do that later. Uh, the minimum height can be like, let's say 640 pixels. That look good. Let's refresh. Yeah, it looks much better, I think. And then you can add more style to it if you want, but just to let you know that we can do that. Uh, and at the same time, we can, and now since we have changed that, we also have to ensure that we come to the code editor. And then I'm going to come in over here, select the cover block, and then click on these three dots, code editor. And then I'm only going to need up until the cover, so I'll just take that one. So I'll take this, and then paste it inside of so my template is in patterns and then cover and I'm just going to replace that. <clears throat> now there's one problem with this. The problem is that what if somebody deletes the image, right? If they go like in the media and they go ahead and delete this image, what happens then? Let's delete it. Okay, so see what happens to my block. I'll refresh it. See, now my image is gone, right? Not good. So what do we do? Well, we do have a solution to this. What if we can take this image, cover, and what if we can put that into our theme? Okay, so make sure just go into one of the uh, JavaScript files like main.js and just import that particular file. So I'll say image and then patterns and then cover JPEG. So now we'll have that available inside of the build. So let's take a look inside of source image. It's running. I should have that. Yep. Here we go. So I just need the path to that. So what I'll do is I'll go inside of my cover pattern. And since we are putting the background image over here, I'm going to open a PHP tag and I'm going to ensure that I'll put that there. So I'll say PHP tag. Oops. In fact, I can just take this whole thing, okay, and I'll create like cover style. And then over here, I'll say sprintf, and then I'm going to need this. And then also, I'm going to say percentage s. And then over here, I have the path available, so I'll say escape URL. And then we have the path available for that. So I've got Aquila build image URI instead of image URI. Now inside of the image URI, I have patterns available. So I have this patterns. 
and then inside of that I've got my cover.jpg so I'll just put that there and that's it and then I'm just going to use the cover style over here I'm going to open the PHP tag PHP tag and then I'm going to say escape attribute put that cover style there and let's try this one so now we have the image what we can do is we'll go ahead and remove the static one and I'm going to open a PHP tag and paste the part of that image here so now we are echoing after doing escape URL we have the build URI which is going to give me the path up until my image patterns sorry up until the image and then it's inside of patterns and then cover JPEG which is what we are doing over here right but that is not enough because if you notice we also have the comment section which is WP cover and we have a URL here as well so you'll have to replace it here as well so what I'm going to do is just copy the, just remove this static URL and paste it so now if I go ahead so now if I go ahead and refresh and click on the plus icon and patterns awesome now we have the image showing properly I can just move it on top and the best part is that it is now coming from the it is now coming from the static image so since we created a a block we since we created a block pattern now this is actually coming from our assets folder so there is no way that the you know the user the editor will be able to delete it because uh, you actually have to go inside of the file in your source folder of your theme and actually delete it from the assets so this is pretty powerful I, I believe in in you know my opinion because so it opens up endless possibilities of what you can do with the block patterns you know you can go ahead and use these uh, you know classes that we added and and you can add your custom styles like for example as you can see that currently it's not styled properly but yeah we can add the style for it and because now we have like kind of a modular pattern we have our block templates separately inside of our template parts it's so easy for you to manage these things and, and make them dynamic okay uh, in fact you can insert some dynamic values also from from the database uh, let's say that you want this heading one to be consistent throughout the site right uh, what you can do is you can probably add a uh, settings in the uh, in your themes options okay in the theme options page you can add some settings that for this block I want this heading to be consistent throughout the site and then you can use the uh, you know you can pull the data out of the database and just use PHP tag over here open the PHP tag and this echo that from dynamically from the database and this is super powerful because I just have to change make a change at one place and then it'll automatically be updated to all of those blocks which is using that dynamic value isn't that super powerful I mean I absolutely love it with with what you can do with the block patterns okay great so that's pretty much it for now I hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and uh, do give star to my repository just like this be beautiful people who have given me stars and uh, do follow me on github my github handles Imranit Sayyad and if you do like my work then please nominate me for github stars on stars.github.com slash nominate okay until then I'm gonna see you I'm gonna see you in the next video and until then take care goodbye bye bye